Hello, my name is Amber Holbein, and today I will be presenting the Hantavirus. Hantavirus was first noticed as an infectious disease in the 1950s. The word Hanta is after the Hantian River in Korea. Over 3,000 troops were deployed and were infected by an unknown disease. 300 of them perished. It was not recognized as a virus until the 1970s when it was isolated. Although it was found to be in rats, not many cases were reported in the U.S. until May of 1993. Hantavirus cardiopulmonary syndrome, or HPS, was recognized. An unusual illness struck a Navajo tribe living in the border of New Mexico and Arizona. An alarming 80% of those infected died. So what exactly is Hantavirus? It is a virus with a genome that contains three single strands of negative sense RNA, of which the largest strand codes for glycoproteins that forms an envelope. This makes them very difficult to destroy. It is a member of the Buena Verde family, which are typically arthropod-borne viruses, but Hantavirus is very unique to this family. So as mentioned before, rodents are the host for the Hantavirus. It is been found in the deer mouse, cotton rat, rice rat, and the white-footed mouse. They all usually live in rural areas, but if they are given enough resources, they can move into urban areas as well. So the rodents themselves develop antibodies and are not infected by the disease but through their waste products such as urine, feces, or even their saliva, when these things are suspended into the air, can be transmitted to humans. There is one strand, the Andes virus, that has been found to be transmitted from human to human, but that was found in Argentina and no cases have been reported in North America. The incubation time is unknown. However, different studies of the virus have shown a range of one to eight weeks. The symptoms are categorized as either early or late symptoms. The universal symptoms are fatigue, fever, and muscle cramps. They may also be accompanied by headache, dizziness, chills, and abdominal issues, which are usually seen in half of the cases. The late symptoms occur around day 4 to 10 after the initial exposure and consist of respiratory issues such as coughing, shortness of breath, chest tightness, and then the lungs fill with fluid and can be very fatal. So to properly diagnose, the case definition must be explored. A case must report a fever of 102, present with respiratory distress, confirmed by an x-ray, but if the patient dies, then an autopsy should be performed to identify non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema with no identifiable cause. For case classification, however, detection of hantavirus-specific immunoglobin M or rising M immunoglobin G should be done, or you can look at the RNA sequence that codes for hantavirus through polymerase chain reaction. And also you can look at the antigen by immunohistochemistry. All of these tests can confirm the cases for hantavirus. According to the CDC, 690 cases have been confirmed. 659 of them have been within the last 23 years and 35 or 31 were diagnosed retrospectively. Of the cases, 78% were white, 18% Native American, and 2% were other ethnic groups. 35 states have reported at least one case, and majority of them were in states west of the Mississippi River. They have been found in other countries as well, but never in a large outbreak. Anyone in contact with rodents are at a potential risk, even if they are healthy, especially people that live in rural areas, as there is a higher prevalence of rodents there. But they are beginning to move into urban areas as well. So for prevention, preventive, preventative strategies, eradication may come to your mind, but that is not an option because rodents do play an important part in our ecosystem. So the best option we have is to modify our environment so that we are not welcoming rodents. We can do this by sealing up food in our pantries or using plastic tubs to store things instead of cardboard boxes, which they tend to use for nesting. And we can also um, seal up areas where mice can enter into buildings, shops, or homes. Anything that we can do to make our personal environment less desirable for a rodent is our best strategy. So unfortunately at this time, there are no cures, treatments, or vaccines. Usually medical care is given um, by putting them in the intensive care unit to intubate and to receive oxygen therapy. And they may, be, they may do better if detected early, but sometimes it is difficult because the symptoms can look like influenza. So it is important for patients 
to tell their doctors that they have been exposed to rodents. So in conclusion, hantavirus is still a potential is issue. Even though it has low prevalence, it is still very deadly. So it is important for us to work diligently on implementing preventative strategies to protect others from being infected. And we must also continue research in hopes to find a cure or treatment for better case management. Here are the references for this presentation. Thank you.